everybody, welcome back to the channel and uh, it's a sunny day so we're going to get out there and finalise this compression test on the engine just to double check what the readings are. So I've got to get the battery connected, get it all ready, uh, I'll take you through those steps and uh, let's get some final readings on the engine. Keep watching. Okay, so this is the compression test kit, comprises of a gauge as you can see and uh, a pipe which uh, just fits nicely into the gauge and on the other end you have the uh, ability to fit uh, different size threaded socket ends so what you need to do is really take out your spark plug on the engine that you're going to do the compression test on, match up the thread with the spark plug thread just to make sure it's the right size and that you don't get any uh, problems in terms of uh, trying to fit the wrong size into the wrong threads on your engine head uh, once you have uh, found the right the right size then uh, you should get a nice snug fit into the uh, into the head itself so when you do crank the engine over you will get that uh, that good reading from the the compression test itself from from the cylinder uh, there are in this particular case a couple of other pipes there which have rubber ends which uh, are, are other ways that you can just sort of hold uh, against the opening of where the spark plug is to again get the uh, the reading but uh, I opted for the threaded version uh, you, you don't have to tighten them up too much when you screw them in actually into the head and uh, they generally give a, a good reading so uh, yeah just thought I'd give a, a quick overview of what that uh, that test kit looks like and and how it works
Okay, we're good to go. So we've got the compression test kit fitted to cylinder number one. You can see there the uh, camshaft pulley is spinning. We're cranking it over three or four times just to get that uh, reading as accurate as possible. And you can see there 155, 11 bar. It's a thumbs up. So we know that cylinder's good. And uh, let's move on to the rest of them. results are in for the compression test and I'm so pleased I did do this uh, for one last time really to just cement the actual uh, final results and know exactly what is happening with each of the cylinders so you can see here on cylinder one we have 11 bar or 155 uh, psi so that cylinder looks good cylinder 3 uh, is 11.25 bar uh, again 160 psi so again that uh, looks good cylinder 4 is the culprit by 
looking at these results, it is, you know, a, a, quite a hefty drop to 7 bar or 100 psi. And then back to cylinder 2, we have uh, bar at 145 psi. So, yeah, th there isn't, I think, sufficient evidence to suggest that there might be uh, a blow between cylinders four and two which I originally thought now when you look at these results and you compare them to the actual stats or the specs uh, released from the factory uh, so it's the 2 litre 125 HP engine and when you come down to look at engine compression you, you see the uh, the tolerances uh, or the boundaries to which uh, the engine can operate uh, I guess efficiently and economically uh, based on these settings so you've got here uh, readings from 8 to 11 bar are within tolerance and uh, just uh, a wear limit of 6 uh, which you know, if, if, if the wear limit is six, is that suggesting if your <clears throat> if your reading is uh, six or below, you're in in uh, in a in a position where you might have to you know look at much more detail of the engine. I'm not sure, um, but then the PSI uh, readings for you know eight to eleven should be somewhere between 114 and 156, which um, you know, if there's a drop towards 85 psi, um, so the equivalent reading to the six, then you have issues. Now, also it does list here, which is is hugely useful, the allowable pressure difference between the cylinders. So it suggests here if you have a drop between, uh, you know, any of the of up to 3 bar or 43 psi then there is uh, again uh, an issue that you need to uh, certainly inspect so you would definitely suggest that between cylinders 3 and 4 there's a, a substantial drop equally cylinders 2 and 4 or 4 and 2 should I say uh, again is, is in that uh, in that range of uh, a drop of three or more so looking at this what what could potentially be the issues and uh, this is something uh, as a would-be home mechanic uh, when you haven't got a lot of the tools that you might have uh, available to you in a, in a garage setup uh, you have to sort of improvise a little bit so there is um, a couple of things that we can do straight off the bat uh, firstly, we can drop uh, a few bits uh, or a few drops of oil into cylinder um, and rerun the compression test. And the idea being that uh, if the failure or the compression drop or the leak within that that cylinder is through the rings on the uh, on the piston, then the oil. Uh, should seal uh, just enough so when we run this uh, compression test again you will see uh, an uplift in, in the compression so you know we might get a, an uplift of 8 to, to 9 bar uh, which then you know clearly identifies that the leak is coming through uh, or, or bypassing the, the piston uh, which means you're your, your, your piston rings have uh, have worn or broken so I'm hoping it's not that I'm hoping it's not that because uh, if that's the case then uh, it's an engine out and uh, yeah we have to really consider what the the, the options are um, this the second option is uh, if all being well the the compression with the oil test stays low so stays at seven even with the the drops of oil into the, uh, the cylinder it it could then point to the fact there is an issue with the valves so uh, the intake valve or the exhaust valve 
and it could be a case that um, the, the stem seals have uh, potentially uh, perished and um, there's, a, there's a, a leak coming through uh, through the stem cell uh, <coughs> excuse me and the yeah the, the, the fix would be obviously to, to put new uh, new seals uh, on the valve so that that is is one of them uh, the other potential is that the valve itself is is not sitting uh, correctly uh, within the within the cylinder which uh, it could be you know the, the potential of a bent valve but um, I'm hoping again you know as an, as a non-interference engine uh, there shouldn't have been any opportunity for that valve to get um, yeah to, to, to experience an impact of any sort so I'm, I'm hoping it's it's the, the sort of uh, the first option which is where we've got um, the valve stem seals have have uh, have perished and, and we can actually you know replace those uh, with the engine still intact uh, without having to remove it so uh, there is I believe some special tools on the market that you can buy and start to re replace the, um, you know an opportunity to to replace all of all of those but this is th this is what I'm gonna have to go and basically find out is what is the potential if it is a sticking valve um, are the valves you know I'm expecting potentially very dirty um, it, it could be sticking um, it could be the you know the uh, the uh, the leaking past the, the stem seal so that's that's the next video uh, is to to go and investigate that to find out um, do a couple of those tests and also to uh, look at what options I have in terms of uh, replacing and, and fixing those valves if that is the case so yeah let me know what you think um, there's the results that's um, what the factory says in terms of uh, the allowances uh, for this engine and uh, yeah be keen to hear if anyone else has had any uh, similar issues um, and similar fixes that they've come across while working on their uh, engines uh, th this in particular the two litre version uh, which is the, the 124 brake horsepower uh, which I think, uh, yeah, the ones that landed in Britain were coded uh, 94XJ, so I'm not sure what massive difference between XK and XJ were. Um, but there, yeah, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the state of play. So, yeah, thanks for uh, watching. Uh, keep uh, following on Instagram and YouTube, and uh, yeah, any thoughts, feedback in terms of... Uh, what some of these results are showing uh, would love to hear from from you so uh, yeah stay tuned <laughs>